Alright, welcome to episode 15 of Mind Chat. Time flies when you're having fun. This <laughs> week we're very happy to invite back Elfie into our um, episodic thing. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. Yeah. Thanks, you know, guys. I'm out of practice with my intros, so um, <laughs> yeah, just please forgive me. And if you look at Rob, he's got some sort of cape on, which... <laughs> I don't know. He's never been to Minecon, so don't give him any credit whatsoever for that. <laughs> I've, I've literally stolen this cape from yeah, somebody else. Basically, from from Rob, from some <laughs> yeah. other Rob in Sorry, the world. Rob. Yeah. So, Alfie, we're back in one of your worlds today. I'm looking forward. I haven't turned around yet because it's going to be a big reveal. So, <laughs> so away you go. Lead us on our All right. a journey. Um, at the start of or the end of last semester. So we run semester, like we run January to December through the year and we have um, two semesters. So half year, uh, we changed the way the year 10 maths program was running at my school. And I got the opportunity to run what we're going to call um, a pre-cal, which so a, a, we have a V-cal certificate in Australia or in Victoria, which is like a, an applied learning certificate instead of an academic one. Um, so this is a, a course designed for students heading that way so not your high academic students those who are more into the hands-on learning and stuff like that mm. so I got um, assigned the the numeracy class or the maths class and I decided that these kids have spent the last you know three and a half four years at school not wanting to do maths hating maths so I thought I'd try something really far out there and something completely different something that pushed my um, pushed my capabilities a lot further than I had in the past as well and uh, this is what I've created here so if you turn around and have a look now Colin at the big reveal wow. um, so this is what I'm calling my numeracy world at the moment and this is all based around students um, using um, life skill math skills so things that they need for life but we're doing it in a virtual world so kind of like second life but not better sense well i've never played second loss so i can't say whether it's better or not i of <laughs> course think it is because it's my creation it's better. exactly yeah. um, it's better already so, we haven't even gone into it so the first thing is you guys are in as students and you cannot build yeah. you're also in adventure mode which means you cannot break blocks without the correct tool mm -hmm. so there is no way you can go and gather dirt or stone or sand or anything like that without having the correct tool in your hand. So this is my way of generating an economy and making sure that you can't subvert my economy. So if we head into the first floor of this is what we're calling, we'll just call this town hall for now, if you will. I haven't got a cool name for it yet. <laughs> um, but this is basically a town hall type Ooh. thing where students, and there's a uh, piece of string here invisible stuff floating around um, so these are all elevators making use of are you right out there Rob yeah <laughs> it's like um, it's like um, airplane 2 the movie <laughs> going, going up towards the door <laughs> shh, shh. Are you okay yeah, <laughs> yeah <I'm> okay. <laughs> um, so these are all elevators going to different floors oh, um, wow. So there are 15 floors, and I think it's about six or seven which are in use at the moment. So if we head up to floor one, um, this is the market where you can come to buy things, um, and uh -huh. this is just buying individual units. So if you go and talk to, and the kids love flipping these around and making them all the wrong way, and it uh, does my OCD in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so excuse me while I just press right button to get them all back straight. So if you right-click on one of these villages, uh -huh. um, this is one of the new cool things I've learned how to do. Okay. Um, so I'm looking at a, sort of yeah, I'm looking for at an inventory, and there's a, it says leather armor at the top five. Is it five coins to get a hat or something? Yep. So you can buy. So everything um, you need to buy, you can't actually create things unless you buy the resources to make it. So you can't make a pick. You need to buy a pick. You can't. You can buy leather and then you would have to buy a crafting table as well, or at least the wood to build a crafting table. Mm -hmm. So everything is based off um, custom NPCs and seven coin types. So we go from wood coins through to, I think it's emerald coins, and we're sort of saying a w one wood coin is, is $1 and one stone is $10 and stuff like that. So we're using a base 10 system here. So mm -hmm. everything you need, you have to buy. Right. 
So these are the these are standard Minecraft villages, just with custom trades built in, and um, the last trade is sponge for sponge, just because there's no way students are going to be able to get sponge, and that's something we need to be able to do to prevent these villages from trading um, normal villager trades, is to prevent that last trade from being traded. Right. Um, and there is a custom texture pack that uh, I've taken off for the, for the purpose of today as well. So, wow, it's amazing. So, Jeez, so that's. So yeah. how do your students get the coins then? Like, do you start them off with a set amount on the? So what sort of um, activities do they have to go through to actually? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they actually they they get a base wage of a hundred wood coins. Okay. And then so one of the major um, weekly things that they must do is maintain a budget in this game um, and I wish I could show you the, the back end of, of all of the budgeting and payslip system it's all based on Google Drive and is oh. is all linked together so I basically deliver the students a payslip each week by editing one master sheet and that goes out to all 20 of my students and then they come in game and they go up and press a button and receive that amount of coin in game if that makes sense mm -hmm. so they get an extra 400 coin 400 wood coins for um, fulfilling their weekly budget and then there's worksheets are worth a certain amount of coins depending on the difficulty of the worksheet um, and then there are other ways that they can gain money but there are also ways they can lose money because um, I asked the students what they wanted you know that, that they had the opportunity to come up with laws and rules and things for this world and they came up with the fines for those as well so they get fines for swearing in class, they get fines for hitting other students, they get fines for coming late, they get fines for not bringing their laptop or not bringing their equipment. And this is what the students came up with. They, they put prices on them all after seeing how much things in here cost and how much money they would get per week. Right. They came up with all the, all the fine costs and, and things like that as well. So it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting project, and it's only it's only in its infancy, so it's two weeks old at the moment. This one, at least mm -hmm. live with students, so you're actually live in the world that the students have been in. Okay. Um, so. So how, how have they reacted to it? Um, the engagement is through the roof. The kids want to be in maths for the first time since mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, is he actually selling anything? No, you're. There's a, there's a couple here that don't seem like they have anything. Yeah. That's the weapon in oh, chance. Oh, these yeah. guys here. Yeah, I probably need Books. to kill them off. I don't. I don't need them. So, yeah. um, I probably need to kill them off. Again, it's it's yeah, still in need of some work. But it's it's a it's definitely a work in progress and something worth sharing. So I think you, anyway. Yeah, definitely. Have you got like is there stuff on every floor already, or you you? Um, it looks like a lot of work. Yeah, no, there's not stuff on every floor. If you come back to the lob lobby, um. Floor two is exactly the same as that, only you can buy stacks of items instead of just singles. So if you go up and have a look at floor two, it'll look exactly the same, only with red carpet instead. And the villagers will sell you stacks of things, with, which is, a, I think it's about a 12% discount on um, individual purchase. So you buy a stack of 64 fish for 12% less than buying 64 fish on their own. Um. Introducing bulk purchasing. Oh, yeah. cool. For discounts. Jeez. So, and then floor three is not yet implemented at all. Um, it's it's the sales floors where students can take goods that they've purchased or killed monsters for or whatever or mm -hmm. mined or whatever and sell those items, but that's not yet implemented, so it's kind of boring. Um, yeah. The structure's there, but no NPCs are in yet. Right. So, um, yeah. So with the materials that they buy, you have you're going to be setting a place for them aside to kind of use those materials. Yeah. So, in another creative world, they're actually building a house, and while they're building that house, they're costing that house. So they need to tell me how much it's going to cost to build, and then they're going to have to apply for a loan. So they're going to have to write me a formal letter to to apply for that loan, as if I was the bank manager, and then work out percentages and, and how much their payments are going to be and how long it's going to take them to pay off and stuff like that. So we're talking real-life maths for these kids in, in mm. a virtual world. Um, so It's so authentic. Oh, my God. 
And um, and if they don't make the payments and stuff, you'll just take their house back, or how's it work? Well, see, at the moment, there's no easy way for them to pay me other than me deducting it from their wage, like a direct debit kind of thing. Right. Um, other than me spending every minute of the game somewhere where the kids can come and give me money and I can mark them off, I want it to be self-sufficient or as self-sufficient as I can get it to be. So at the moment, each week, all I need to do is spend um, about, I don't know, an hour checking the kids' budgets to make sure they've updated it, adjusting their pay slips accordingly, and then coming in and transferring that information into the game. So each week at the moment, yeah, it's about an hour's worth of work to maintain, which is not actually that bad for a project. No, it's not that bad at all. Um, So so floor four, if you head up there, is the bank. Um, And this is where people, like the Mm. students, can come in and pretend to go sit in an office and talk to me or go to the tellers and swap their coins for for higher or lower denominations and stuff like that. Oh. So everything is in base 10. So in theory, if you've got 10 diamond coins, you can get one iron coin. So... Um, ah, okay, wow. Oh, I can see this just, yeah, just really, really well planned out here, Alfie. <laughs> It's yeah, there's a guy named Robert here. Yes. <laughs> um, it's over the other side that all, all the people I know are. So you've got Carl and Matt and Shane, which are all on the Edge Crew server. Um, and Shane, Shane, um, I don't know if you guys are much into the group now, but Shane does a lot of work in the group, and um, he helped me. He's really good at um, the visual appeal. So he he pretty much designed the whole bank floor here. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, it's like um, real, yeah, so, yeah. real banks maze to yeah. get to the teller. Yep. Robert. All right, next time we come in here, I want somebody named after me. Colin. <laughs> I haven't got a. Oh, I'll come up to the residential floors. There might be a Colin up here in the lobby. Yeah. Um, there may not be. Um, but Shane helped me up here as well with the with the realism, I guess. We've got Spock and Albert Einstein arguing over here, and this <laughs> is the restaurant, so you can actually buy food up in the restaurant, but it'll cost you more than the food down at the store down below just because it's a restaurant. So yep. I'm not sure the kids have picked up on that yet, um, but it's actually it's it's going to be really interesting to see what they do and whether they actually do come up here to. Um, to purchase food or whether they do just sit downstairs and eat it or on the fly mm. and then um, tin here by the fountain will sell you cheap dodgy potions no. that uh, do nasty things to you he looks a bit dodgy so, yeah so and it, it's, the interesting thing is some kids have already purchased them so of course because they they're keeping a week yeah because they're keeping a weekly budget they need to be able to um, write that in their budget and then you know we'll be able to talk about well was that a, a wise choice for for purchase um, was it a wise choice to buy a potion of blindness? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Would you like to try one? They're cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll pass. Um, What's Leo so and Duncan all about? They're yeah. just receptionists, basically. Um, they don't really do much at all. Um, I need to... Um, probably add some more dialogue and stuff up here, but that's just again a time thing at the moment um we're teething issues at the moment getting all there because we're using edmodo and google drive we're getting all of those set up and all of those fluently running together as well so the conversation so if we head between up spock and, and, and Arvind, is hilarious <laughs> yeah. you can thank That's shane for that one <laughs> so well, if you head up to residential right floor number six this will okay. give you an idea of um, what $80 or, or 80 wood coins a week will get you for a room. Um, uh, so, not much. Not I'm much here. Much it. So, that's that's floor four, floor six and floor seven are all like that. Just cheap as chips housing yeah. sort of thing. So, I'm but charging nice each student. <laughs> yeah, pretty nice view. Um, yeah, I haven't actually tiered the rooms yet. I should, but I'm not going to. Um, so yeah, that's yeah, eighty dollars and not eighty dollars a week. So, um, but later on, um, I'll open up the um, penthouse suite for you. You can come oh, and have yeah. a look at the penthouse suite. Assuming, so if you come back down to the residential lobby, Let's see if I can find my way down. Oh, here it is. Yeah. 
And over here, I've just opened up to the penthouse suite, so if you jump in there, ah. it won't work because the teleporter is not set up. So how about I do that? Maybe I don't have a teleporter up there. Hmm. Give me a moment. I'll be back. No <laughs> <laughs> sure. Get your players out. And I'll what? show you that. Oh, there it is. I'll show you the pay floor later. Oh, yeah, there isn't a teleporter up here. Well, that's silly. I'll blame Shane. Yeah. Yeah. So you have wow. really, you have really done basically what Second Life tried to do, like over probably ten years. So you can just, you, it's basically there's a, there's an economy here. You, there's a currency. And there's a kind of a, an authentic way of, of living in a, in a virtual world for your students, basically. Yeah. Like getting a bit of life experience, you know. Yeah. With, with financial matters. And as I said, these kids are not kids that are into maths. And yeah, the, right. The engagement I have seen is pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just in the last two, you know, they've only been in this world for two 90 minute sessions. So oh, yeah. your elevator is now ready, gents. All right. If you up want to head to up and have a look at So, how much will this penthouse, penthouse cost? I haven't decided yet. Oh, we're moving to a <laughs> to new be, location. To be completely honest, so you're going up to the top floor. So, I haven't actually decided how much this will cost yet because none of the students have the money to actually afford it. Um, but you get your widescreen TV, your walk in robe, your bathroom, your swimming pool, spa, um, automatic lighting. So, if, if I turn it to night time, all your lights would automatically turn on and record wow. players and just, just luxury compared to what you see down below. So, yeah. I don't know how much it'll cost yet. Um, but that's, that's sort of what we're looking at here. So. Alright, you've still got that little glitch in Minecraft ED where you transport, you, the other people disappear. Oh, have you got that? Because I'm yeah. not having that issue with you guys. You both are, both are showing up quite well. Yeah, okay. I can see you guys. I, no, I, I've, I've lost you both. I can hear um, you well, walking along the yeah. wall. <laughs> but, um, yeah. That's you want me to turn cool. on Rob and you can walk past here. and whack him one? <laughs> <laughs> nice swimming pool, yeah. I was out there taking a dip. Um... So another thing that happens is, oh, Colin's about to jump off. No, I'm good. Big surge yep. to push him off. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can, um, when you die, you keep your inventory. So I'm charging you fifty dollars to to go to the hospital and and come back alive. If that if that sort of makes sense. So that's another yeah. way you you spend money to just to make it more authentic. So you have to buy food instead of just starving to death, and right. you know buy armor and and weapons to defend yourself. Right. Um, so it'll, yeah, it costs fifty dollars per per death. Per death, yeah. So. I'll uh, Grand Theft Auto. Exactly. Um, I was just about to say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Colin, can you see me yet or no? No, no. That's fine though. I don't need to see you. I can um, hear footsteps, like being in a haunted mansion. I'm right in front of you. <laughs> he just walks straight through. You are a ghost, Rob. Yeah. Um, sh shiver. I'll change my name to Patrick Swayze. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not Demi Moore. <laughs> yeah, where's the where's the pottery wheel? <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> would, uh, would make you Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see the, it's the scene from the, from the Naked Gun. Where it's just... Yeah. Oh uh, dear. Oh, so cool! So, very, okay. very, very cool. Like, again, you've kind of overwhelmed me with your um, with your kind of innovation here. So yeah, it's just. How long does like it take say, to set up, Alfie? Longer than I care to tell you. <laughs> yeah. um, it looks like talking, it. Are you talking uh, dozens of hours, or are you talking like... Uh, probably a hundred or yeah, so. Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, a, a lot of the, the floors and everything was cut and paste and world edit stack and stuff like that, but sure. each of those custom villages needed to be edit, edited individually, um, and that took time, and then I had to design the actual... Um, currency not the currency that the actual economy and yep. stuff like that so that that actually took a whole heap of time so what if you the, go back sorry? down no sorry go what was gonna say what was the biggest challenge doing this like what um, was the what was the, the like what was the biggest problem that you had at this base when you're putting this all together come and i'll show you the biggest uh, achievement if you head sure. down to the lobby mm -hmm. um and then head to floor 13 in the elevator um that's that's where the real 
interesting bit comes along as well. So, so I'll have to open it up for you. So I'll open it up right down on the left here. So if you head to the left side of the red brick wall, um, I've opened this area up for you. So this here is the pay system, um, which is just a, a massive array of, of command mm. blocks. No, oh my goodness. So each student has one line of, of command blocks, and the basic system is, is this student online, and have they been paid this week? Holy if they cow. Haven't, if they haven't been paid this week, give them their pay, and then mark them as paid. <laughs> Um, if they have been paid, nothing happens. And then over where you are, Colin, at the moment is the reset switch. So every Sunday night after I've set up all of their pay for the week, I hit this button and it resets their pay for, and their death count. So we keep track of deaths and we keep track of whether they're being paid or not using the new scoreboard system. So press, please don't press it, but if you press that button, it resets all the students' pay flag and all their death count to zero so that we Holy can start fresh geez. each week so this is yeah this was what took a lot of time to set up because no um it took me a while to twig that you needed a comparator on the end of a command block to get it to go through if that student's online and stuff like that so there's a, a lot of test work in here and a lot of yeah a lot of messing around to get it up and running the way it is there's, there's about a hundred there must be a hundred uh command blocks in here Two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's twenty, so 110 just in the array for paying, and then it's two per student plus a few extras. So it's probably 40 or 50 in the reset array at the moment. Jesus. Wow. Mind and then blown. there's a, <laughs> and then there's a, a clock running all the time with another command block in it that changes you constantly to um, adventure mode. So if because there is no adventure mode by default in Minecraft EDU. So right. anytime you enter this world, technically you just enter in survival. Um, and what that command block does is it tests for anyone in survival mode and then resets them into adventure mode so that they can't break blocks and stuff. Right. So, I'm taking my fingers off the, uh, off my mouse. I don't want to actually accidentally <laughs> just click one button. Not no a single one. I'm getting out of here, actually. Just yeah. <laughs> wow. Is that ever impressive? So, that is impressive. So, what's the button on this wall for here? Don't well, touch it. That's yeah. well, not going <laughs> to touch no, it. You, you can press that one if uh, you out, Rob, because you've disappeared on me. Yeah, I'm just behind you, Alfie. All right, I'll seal that back up. Um, you can press it; it won't affect anything. Um, that's the pay system. That's what checks whether you've been paid for the week. Okay, so, so students will come up here and click that button, okay, and it yeah. checks for them. Checks so, yeah. for the students in a radius and pays them. Right. Yeah. So the next step if you head out and look out a window is to allow students to purchase a block of land um, wherever they choose I need to go down and, and allocate blocks of land and, and work out prices and everything I think it was going yeah. to be about 500 bucks a square meter so 500 bucks a square um, and so that way they could buy a 10 by 10 for 50 grand right. um, and then add that to the cost of the house and stuff like that and then apply for their loan and things like that so that's the next job to do is to go out and allocate blocks of land and let students purchase them and then they can either rebuild their house after purchasing all the materials to do so in this world um, or they can pay me a 10% levy to uh, actually world edit it across for them. Wow. That's... Can students trade with each other? Yep. Again. So what I'm hoping, because I've made my prices pretty exorbitant if you have a look at them, um, I'm hoping students will run a business on here. So mm -hmm. one student wants to run a, a mining business. So I'm hoping I'll allocate him a, a, a chunk of land and I'll convert that chunk to, you know, he can choose one of <laughs> 10 chunks or whatever and, and run the risk and it'll cost him 100 grand for the chunk or mining rights for that chunk and that chunk alone and then he's going to have to try and make that money back by undercutting my prices. <laughs> nice. So at the moment, my coal is, you know, let's say it's $8 per coal. So he could come in and say to the students, guys, uh, don't buy coal from Elfie anymore. Here's a ripoff. I sell it for 6 bucks." Right. <laughs> you know, and then I can then go and change my price. If I hear that in class, I can then go and change my price for coal down to 5 and we can start a little market war. Yeah. And, yeah, try and, try, try and go down that... Um, 
running a business and trying to keep your profit while maintaining what what you need to spend to maintain it if that makes sense yeah. so that's that's another step after they've got their house they then need to try and work out a business if they want to run it someone wants to run a zoo someone wants to run a nightclub stuff like that so it's gonna yeah again it's it's two weeks old this world and nothing has been built in here except what i've done um but i've got one student applying for a loan at the moment so <laughs> she'll be able to have a block of land and build on that block of land shortly nice so um, i think i'm thinking we'll come back in maybe a month and see how this place has evolved yeah i'm i'm hoping it'll just get huge and bustling it, i'm hoping like i could see how far it can go and the kids at the moment are um looking like they'll take it as far as i'm hoping so yeah come back later and i'm mm. hoping this will be a little hive of activity where students have built houses and and are renting business properties off me and running a business front out of their store and yeah. stuff like that. So How many students is it total you will have in uh, here? 20, 20, 20. in here. Oh, seems like the perfect number, actually. Yeah, it's actually nice. Yeah, it's not bad at all. It's to keep um, track of and stuff. Yeah, I thought it was going to be less, but again, it doesn't really matter at this stage. It's Since it's only an hour to set up and the kids are actually interested, um, some kids are already subverting my system because they get three thousand dollars for homework for doing any homework for maths <laughs> um and these are kids that have never done homework in their life wow. and one kid in the first week said uh put a post on our edmodo group sent me a direct post saying hey uh elfie i think we should do this so i replied to him this was on a saturday afternoon or saturday night or something so i replied to him and said well yeah that's a great idea i'll see what i can do thanks for doing some work outside of class. You've just earned yourself the homework bonus of $3,000. Mm. And then, so we went into school on Monday and I said, did you get my reply post? He said, yeah, 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 I did. Um, he collected his $3,000 and he's the richest man on the server and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> and then Monday night at about 5.30, he went home. Well, while he was at home, he actually replied to my reply so he could get another $3,000 because uh. <laughs> he'd done work outside Smart. of class. Yeah. So... You know, I've got no issue with that. If he wants to do that, like that's fantastic. Um, yeah. As long as those, as long as what he's doing is actually thoughtful and, and useful, right. it's not just a random post. Yeah. Um, I'm more than happy for him to do that. And he, the interesting thing is, is he hasn't told any of his mates. So <laughs> each week he's making a post, getting three thousand dollars and not telling anyone <laughs> that how he's getting that three thousand dollars. Nice um, work, that then, chap. Yeah, another student today, um, I was chatting to another teacher and I, I had said in the past that the homework bonus was only for maths homework, um, but another student today, I was talking to another teacher about him and this is a student who I don't reckon has ever done homework in his life, let alone work in a classroom. And um, this other teacher was saying how impressed she was that he'd actually done homework and uh, I said, well, I'll give him his homework bonus in the maths world. So I went out at recess and caught him and said, you know, this teacher was really excited by the homework you've done, was really impressed. Um, and she's, she said, you know, maybe you deserve a $3,000 bonus for doing homework in the maths world. And he went, oh, that's cool. Two seconds later, I heard him shouting to his mates, hey, hey, guys, I got the three grand. <laughs> <laughs> so, and to hear that from students that are not interested in learning um, I'm taking as a massive, massive win. I'm, I'm thinking this is, is, yeah, yeah, a project worth worth continuing with and worth following. Yeah, the so, hours, the hours you put into it, say, if it's, even if it was 250 hours, it doesn't, it, it just drifts away when you actually see that kids are actually getting something out of it. You know. Well, that's right. I mean, I had kids say to me, "Oh, wow, Alfie, you're actually using like two or three programs to make this really interesting for us, aren't you?" Mm. Yeah, I am. Yeah, you know, so and then it. that. That same student that got the three thousand dollar bonus off the other teacher said to me in the first lesson, "No, nah, Minecraft's crap. My little brother plays it. I'm not playing it." Mm. Mm. That was his uh, his first first response, and I said, "Look, this is what I'm actually planning on doing. This is how I'm going to run it." And he's gone, "Oh, that sounds pretty interesting. I want to run a nightclub." <laughs> <laughs> you know, so straight away he's gone. Well, I can see where that's going, and this is what I want to do with it. And what grade are they again? He's a year? Year 10, which year 10. is 16 year olds. Okay, yeah. grade 9. Yeah, because at that age, they're kind of like, nah, Minecraft, blah. I probably. They probably moved on to other games rather than yeah, Minecraft, I mean, like in their, in their, in their think, outside world. I think world. they missed, I think that age group missed the Minecraft boat. 
um, at least in my in my school, that mm. age group missed the Minecraft boat. Um, so I think some of them are now like I know one student is has bought it on his iPod now and is playing it and saying, "Hey, Elfie, don't don't make a house out of fire, ha- house out of wood and then put a fireplace in." <laughs> said, really? Why from not? His <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had this great house. It took me ages to build, and it, it's all gone now. And I'm like, well, fire spreads, you know. <laughs> this is what it does. It burns wood. So. Glad he did it in Minecraft world instead of the real world. <laughs> instead of the real world, yeah. yeah. Real world lessons in a virtual world. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The best sort of lessons. So, so this, yeah. yeah, this looks amazing, and it's just one of these kind of experiments, lessons that... You know, it just kind of encompasses a lot, a whole different gamut of of lessons for or learning for this for your students. It's yeah, like you know, as you say, like your students, you know, may not have had any interest, or they may have not had any experience with buying and selling things and going to the bank and things like that. It's it's you know, if you could be reaching these students the way schools or your school could never have reached them otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So. I think we'll set a date to come back in maybe a month's <laughs> time and see what's All going right. on. I, I'm going to take a final look around here to look at the green spaces, and I'm sure yep. next time we come back, um, there may be some little plots of land being developed by the budding Hopefully. entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, and if I if I stop replying to all your emails and and don't listen to you, it's probably because the project's failed and no one wants to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you never know. It. Yes. You never know what's going to happen. I'm sure it's going to be no, a success, right. though. Yeah, absolutely. He's hoping. Yeah. Right. So thanks again because you know every episode we do with you is is always something new and exciting and you make me inadequate <laughs> 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 with the amount of work no, that you no, do. No. Every, everyone does things different. This is what I keep telling people, and they say, "Oh, Alfie, how can I do anything when compared to what you do?" I'm like, "You do what you do for your students. What I do is for mine. Yeah, exactly. it's designed for me, and my school, my kids. You know, so do what you do, and you know." You're willing to put the, you know, your your kind of your, your step. Well, I'm not. I'm not trying to feed your ego here, but like, com- like I've <laughs> feed, talked. Feed, feed. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of Minecraft teachers, and so was Rob. But I think the the amount of hours you put in is is second to none. I think the the kind of and and you can see it from each of the worlds you built, like with the with the um, probability world, with the with the um, animal That's cell idea. world, yeah, and and then this one, the the amount of hours you put in, even before the kids can even come in, is you know you have you always have like a goal at the end of your your project to actually this is what you want to do and so you 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 know you put your 100 hours in and you know this is the fruits of your hard labor so respect and yeah you'll get <laughs> and I see, I, you'll still get more out of it too i mean you're going to get way more out of it than you put into it so that's awesome i think so yeah. and like Definitely. i say that that hour a week to maintain is is what i is what i want like mm. the like i say i wish i could show you and uh, show you the budgets and the way all the back end works because that was that was about a 20-hour build-up itself as well. Because, mm. um, oh, did you want to stop the recording before we go down to this, or do you want to hear it no, now? No, that's fine. You can go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> we'll wrap um, it up I've with got, this. Yeah, your back-end work. I've got um, 15 uh, master week spreadsheets with 20 student pages on it. So each student's got a page on that, and each of those pages is linked to one student document. With So there are, hang on, let me say this again. 15 master documents with 20 pages each linked mm-hmm. to 20 student documents with 15 pages each. So I make changes live in the classroom as a student swears, I'll put down swearing and give them that fine. 30 seconds later, it appears on their pay slip that they can access 24-7. Is there an actual link between the Minecraft backend and the Google no, Drive? That's, no, that's, that's, no just... that's all manual. But right. their pay slip, their pay slip is Google, is Google Drive based. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their yeah. actual pay is in here, but their yeah. pay slip is Google Drive based. So, right. yeah, it's all all upfront and honest and open. So, mm-hmm. it's um yeah that was that was a massive massive project to get going. But gee, I learned a lot about Google Docs. <laughs> yeah, mm. that's good though. No, it's just the best. It's the best way to kind of share the documents as well and see instant yeah, it updates. Yeah, works works yeah. really well. Yeah. All right, we'll wrap it up here then, and um, 
watch this space I'm sure episode 17 will be with you maybe in a month's time if we don't have anybody else to um, fill the gap before you before you're ready okay. with your students <laughs> <laughs> so um, thanks a lot it's always a pleasure and um, we'll see you in a future episode no worries thanks very much for coming by guys no worries. nice to see you again thanks <laughs>